This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey, this is Rick Renner, and I want to welcome you to today's program. Today, we're going to return to the series, Christmas, the rest of the story. And you'll notice on the screen behind me, a beautiful illustration of shepherds watching over their flocks. And the Bible tells us that on the day that Jesus was born, an angel appeared to a particular group of shepherds to announce the birth of Jesus. What was that group of shepherds? There were many shepherds in Israel. Is there a reason why the angel appeared to this particular group of shepherds? The answer is yes. And today we're going to discover the answer together. But I'm speaking to you from the series, which is called Christmas, the rest of the story. The subtitle says, Amazing Insights About Christmas You've Never Heard Before. My friends, this series really is jam-packed with treasures that you've never heard before about the birth of Jesus. They just thrill my heart, and I know it's going to thrill your heart as well. This series also comes with a study guide. And right now we're offering you my book, which is called Christmas, The Rest of the story. It is just such a fabulous book. The back says there's more to this story than you've been told. And the reason I wrote this book is because when I was growing up, I heard the same story every year. And I begin to think, surely there's got to be more to the story. And when I begin to dive deep into the Bible and into history and to all the things that had been written about Christmas and begin to put it all together, just an amazing story emerged. And that's why I call this book Christmas the rest of the story. You can order all of these things by going online or by giving us a call. And when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you because we're praying people and we're just waiting for the phone to ring or for your email to show up so we can begin to pray for the needs in your life. But watch this and then I'll be back in just a moment. In a culture where Santa seems to overpower the reason for the season, it's time to return to the true meaning of Christmas. In Rick Renner's timeless new book, Christmas, The Rest of the Story, Rick uncovers the stunning details of the nativity story you have never heard. Details like, who exactly was Joseph, the father of Jesus? Why did God choose Mary? What was the star that guided the wise men? Who were the wise men who came to see Jesus? How far did they travel? And what was the value of the gifts they brought to Christ? Through its detailed watercolor illustration, Christmas, the rest of the story, invites families to explore the true meaning of Christmas as they interact with the story across decorated pages in a coffee table size format. When you call or go online right now to order this book for just $45, you'll receive the eternal story of Christmas. Now, beautifully told in this timeless keepsake, this is a sweeping portrait of the Christmas story, allowing readers to reflect on why Jesus came at the dawn of the first century and ultimately the reason for his birth. With stunning illustrations and nearly 300 pages, your family can create a tradition that will last for generations. Great as a gift for enhancing your own traditions. Order the book today, Christmas, The Rest of the Story, for just $45. Call now or go to renner.org to order. Don't miss this special Christmas offer. Hey, welcome back to the program. Today we're going to answer the question, who were the shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night that the angel of the Lord appeared to? And we're told in the Bible that on the night Jesus was born, an angel and then a multitude of a heavenly host appeared to a particular group of shepherds to make the announcement that Christ had been born in nearby Bethlehem. But there were many, many shepherds in Israel. So is there a particular reason why God appeared to this particular group of shepherds and not to others? Was this just a random choice? Or was there a reason that the angel of the Lord delivered the message to this particular group of shepherds. Well, let's begin today by going to Luke chapter 2 and reading verses 8 to 11, which says, And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, 
For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Oh, it's so powerful. But notice that verse 9 says, These shepherds were abiding in the field and were keeping watch over their flocks at night when this angelic event took place. Well, very near Bethlehem, there really is an ancient field, which is called the shepherd's field, where shepherds watched over their flock day and night, and the shepherds literally abided in that field or they lodged there. It's very near to the city of Bethlehem. Many, many people go to see the church of the nativity, and they don't even know that the shepherd's field is just right over there. Some people perhaps have seen the sign. Maybe others have driven by it but you can actually go down into the shepherd's field and experience those rocky pastures. I have been there many, many times, and my friends, it really is the place where the angels appear to a particular group of shepherds. But there is a long-held tradition that the shepherds in that particular area bred and raised sheep that were to be offered as lambs without blemish for temple sacrifices, particularly at the time of the Passover, and the Jewish historian Josephus wrote that every year up to 260,000 lambs were sacrificed at the temple in Jerusalem at the time of the Passover. But Jewish regulations required that these sacrificial lambs be born very near to Jerusalem so they could be easily transported to the temple site where they would be sacrificed. And for this reason, now listen to this, there was a special group of shepherds under rabbinical care who bred and raised lambs to be used for temple sacrifice in the fields near Bethlehem because it was so close to Jerusalem. And because sacrificial lambs were to be offered to God, they had to be lambs without blemish. That means they had to meet very strict legal religious standards. And to meet these requirements, shepherds under rabbinical care bred and raised them in a strictly controlled environment. And at the time of a newborn lamb's birth, every male was inspected to assure it was without defect because lambs offered at the time of Passover had to be lambs without blemish and shepherds in the region of Bethlehem under this special rabbinical care were charged to maintain a clean stable for a birthing place. And once the newborn lambs were birthed, these shepherds wrapped the newborn lambs in strips of cloth or swaddling clothes to protect them from injury. And then the shepherds placed the newborn lambs into a stone feeding trowel until a priest came to inspect them and declare them to be without blemish and therefore fit to be used as sacrificial lambs. The early church historian Eusebius wrote that near Bethlehem was a place called, now listen to this, Migdal Eder, which means the tower of the flock. And this is very significant because in ancient Jewish writings, it was stated that animals found as far as Migdal Eder could be used for sacrifice in the temple in Jerusalem. And at that ancient tower, shepherds under rabbinical care brought their lambs to give birth to newborn lambs that were to be used for sacrifice at the temple in Jerusalem. And because the tower was deemed to be a clean stable for a birthing place, the shepherds stayed near to the tower as they grazed their flocks night and day. Noted historian and theologian Albert Edersheim wrote, We know that on the night in which our Savior was born, the angel's message came to those in or near Bethlehem that were keeping watch. For close by Bethlehem on the road to Jerusalem was a town known as Migdal Eder, the watchtower of the flock. For here was the station where shepherds watched their flocks that were destined for sacrifices in the temple. And so well known was this that if animals were found as far as Migdal Eder and within that circuit of every side, the males were offered as burnt offerings and the females as peace offerings. And it seems of the deepest significance, almost like the fulfillment of type, that those shepherds who first heard tidings of the Savior's birth who first listened to the angels' praises were watching flocks destined to be offered 
as sacrifices at the temple. But Luke chapter 2 verse 8 says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. That word abiding means they were lodging in the fields, and these were fields very close to Migdal Eder, so that the shepherds could quickly transport the mother lambs to this site where they would give birth to the newborn lambs in a very clean environment. And once those newborn lambs were birthed, the shepherds wrapped them in swaddling clothes to protect them. But what I want you to understand is these were no mere shepherds. These were shepherds under rabbinical care that had been given the very serious responsibility to breed and to raise sacrificial lambs. And on the night that Jesus was born, these particular shepherds were keeping watch. That word keeping watch means to protect, to watch over, to guard. It is the very word that is used to describe soldiers that are watching over whatever has been entrusted to their care. And it is the very word used to describe shepherds who have an unbroken vigilance to watch over their flocks. And that's what they were doing. And the tents means they were constantly guarding, constantly watching these flocks because these lambs were for sacrifices at the temple particularly at the time of the Passover. And these shepherds kept their eyes on them because they knew these were no mere sheep. These were sheep and lambs that were holy unto the Lord. And they had their eyes fixed on those sheep. But then in Luke 2 verse 9, we find there was a sudden and surprising angelic appearance to this particular group of shepherds. And the Bible tells us, Luke chapter 2, verse 9, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. But notice something interesting. At this particular point, only one angel appears, just one. And this one angel begins to speak to this group of shepherds. Eventually, there was a multitude of a heavenly host that appeared with the angel, but at this particular moment, it was just one angel. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 9, it says the angel came upon them. Came upon is a Greek word which describes a sudden, surprising, and glorious appearance. It totally took them off guard. And in fact, verse 9 goes on to say, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. That word glory is a Greek word that describes the glory, splendor, and weighty presence of God, a presence so heavy that you would collapse under it, which means when the glory of God came, not only was it brilliant and splendorous, but there was such a heavy presence of the glory of God that the shepherds who were just minding their business as they were keeping their eyes fixed on these sacrificial sheep suddenly collapsed under the weighty presence of God. And the verse says, the glory of the Lord shone round about them. This describes a very strong beam of light. Suddenly, these shepherds find themselves laying flat and rather than the entire countryside being lighted up, they are encased in a single beam of light, almost as if they have been singled out. And the Bible tells us in verse 9, they were sore afraid. And the original text actually says they feared with fear greatly. And that is why in verse 10, the angel said, fear not. And in Greek, it is a very strong prohibition. We mean stop fearing, stop it right now. And my friends, this angel did not come to scare them. This angel came to thrill them with the best news they had ever heard. And that's why the very next word is behold. That word behold carries the idea of amazement. Even the angel was taken with a sense of wonder at what he was about to say. And in verse 10, he said, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Good tidings depicts the greatest news anyone has ever heard. Great joy actually describes gargantuan joy. And then he tells them the good news. And then the angel added, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. But what exactly do these words, Savior, Christ, and Lord, mean? Well, first, the angel announced that the Savior is, had been born. That word Savior literally means, listen to this, deliverer, Savior, healer, protector, and preserver. 
And it was a divine announcement that Christ had come into the world to set mankind free from the dominion of Satan's rule on earth. And with this name, Savior, the angel declared that Jesus would bring saving power, delivering power, healing power, protecting power, and preserving power to those who trust in him. But second, the angel announced that he was the Christ. The name Christ means the anointed one, and it is the Greek equivalent for the Hebrew word Messiah. So the angel actually announced that Jesus was the anointed one, or he was the long-awaited Messiah. But third, the angel called Jesus the Lord. The word Lord is a Greek word, which means the absolute Lord, the one who is over all, and it is the identical word used in the Greek Septuagint version of the Old Testament for Jehovah. Thus, the angel's declaration was that Jesus was Jehovah in the flesh, and there was and is no higher authority or power than Jesus Christ in all the universe. So when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the angel made it clear that he was the Savior, that is, he was the Deliverer, the Savior, the Healer, the Preserver, and he had been born with the express purpose to set mankind free from the dominion of Satan on the earth. So again, the name Savior means Deliverer, Savior, Healer, Protector, or Preserver. The name Christ means he was the long-awaited Messiah. The name Lord means he was Jehovah God in the flesh. But then we come to Luke chapter 2, verse 12, where the angel told this particular group of shepherds, and this shall be a sign unto you. The Greek really means especially for you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. But notice these words, unto you. And in the original language, it literally means this will be a sign especially for you guys. And remember, The angel was speaking to the shepherds under rabbinical care who took the newborn lambs and wrapped them in swaddling clothes. In this case, we find God is giving a sign to these shepherds that they really will understand. He was speaking to them in words and symbols that had meaning to them, just like God speaks to each of us in a way that we understand. In essence, the angel said, hmm, we're giving you a sign especially for you and you'll find the babe the newborn lamb wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. But notice he also said, you shall find the babe. The word find here is very, very important because in Greek, it depicts a very intensive investigation or search. Well, you have to remember that there were many, many caves in the area around Bethlehem. And in order for these shepherds to find the correct baby, they were going to have to search to find him. The shepherds would search diligently throughout the hillside. And that is what the angel told them to do. And if they would do it, they would find the Christ child. It's also very interesting that the Greek word for find is also where we derive the word eureka, which means when they finally found the Christ child, it would be a euphoric moment when they would say, eureka, we have found him. And the word babe is very important because the Greek word describes an infant or a newborn, which means this glorious appearance of the angels to this particular group of shepherds probably occurred within minutes after the birth of Jesus. And the confirming sign that the shepherds had found the right baby was they would find the newborn wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. And we've already seen that swaddling clothes depicted the bandages or strips of material used for wrapping the little legs of newborn lambs to protect them from injury. And remember, these were shepherds under rabbinical care who were raising lambs to be used for temple sacrifice in nearby Jerusalem. And when a newborn lamb was born, it was customary for them to wrap a newborn lamb in swaddling clothes. This is what they did for sacrificial lambs. And once they were born, Then they checked them to inspect them to make sure they were a lamb without blemish. In essence, the angel's words meant this. I know that your assignment 
is to care for the little sacrificial lambs that are born under your watch and to wrap them in swaddling clothes. But I'm announcing to you that you've had your eyes fixed on the wrong lambs because the real lamb of God has just been born in Bethlehem. And when you find him, you'll know it's him because he will be wrapped in the swaddling clothes just like you would normally use for a newborn lamb. This is a sign especially for you. That is amazing to me. And when the shepherds found Christ, they knew it was him because he was dressed in swaddling clothes, just like the angel had told them. It was a sign especially for them because it was their job to take newborn lambs and wrap them in swaddling clothes to protect them from injury so they would be lambs without blemish. And when they saw Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes, it was a eureka moment. It was so euphoric as they understood, wow, all along, we've had our eyes on the wrong lambs. The real Lamb of God has just been born in Bethlehem. And the Bible tells us after they found him, then they departed and they began to report the good news to anyone who would listen. And the people who heard what these rabbinical shepherds had to say wondered at their words. And the reason they wondered is because people knew, hey, these are no mere shepherds. These are rabbinical shepherds. These are shepherds who really know what they're doing and their job is to watch over sacrificial lambs. And if these shepherds say they have found the real lamb of God, it really means something. And it left the hearers simply speechless. That's why this particular angel appeared to this particular group of shepherds. But then suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. What is a multitude of the heavenly host? Well, that's what we're going to discover in the next program. But hey, we're out of time, but I'll be back in just a moment and I want to pray for you. Do you really know the story of Christmas? Is there more to the story about the birth of our Savior than what you've been told? In this series, Christmas, The Rest of the Story, Rick Renner dives deep into the parts of the Christmas story that most people have never heard. Rick says, I've studied this story for decades, and I found fabulous treasures no one ever shared with me. In this series, we explore the Bible, history, historical writings, and so much more, so we can really understand all the events that took place surrounding the birth of Jesus. Rick answers questions like, why did God choose Mary? Was Joseph really a carpenter? Why was Herod so troubled by Jesus' birth? Who were the Magi? And what was the estimated value of their gifts? This 15-part documentary type series is available in digital or physical format, starting at just $24. And we're excited to also offer you Rick's stunning new book, Christmas, The Rest of the Story. It's a book you'll want to share with friends and family at this time of the year. This hardcover, 300-page, fully illustrated book is a keepsake that friends and family will pass on to future generations. Don't miss this special offer, the series, Christmas, The Rest of the Story, and the beautiful book, Christmas, The Rest of the Story. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and I'm standing outside the new TV studio in Moscow. Praise God, most of the interior is already finished. They're still working on Denise's studio, so pray for us as we continue, it's gonna be nice. And if you see the big bulldozer behind me, that's because they're getting ready to do the parking lot. You know, winter comes pretty early in our part of the world, so we need to really seize the moment and get this parking done before the cold weather sets in. But hey, we're making progress and praise God, the studio is paid for. This is all paid for. And I wanna say thank you for being the most amazing partners and helping us with this. And now the project in front of us is to pay off the Tulsa facility. We want to retire the debt on the big office complex in Tulsa because when that's paid off, suddenly all those finances are gonna be released for us to go on more TV and minister to people all over the world. My friends, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 10, 21, that the lips of the righteous feed many. I know that's my assignment, to feed as many people the Word of God as possible, and I'm doing it with you. Wow. 
Thank you for being a partner. You're part of the giving team that's helping us make amazing progress. And if you're not a part of the giving team yet, please pray about joining us to retire the debt on the Tulsa building. It's not about buildings. It's just about having the space we need so that we can effectively minister to people. We want to retire that debt so we can take the Word of God to more parts of the world where people are crying out for teaching they can trust. And I want to say thank you for everything you do. I want to thank you for joining me today. We have covered a lot of information and we're just getting started. Tomorrow, we're going to see what is a multitude of a heavenly host. I think you're going to be quite surprised, but we're offering you the brand new series, which is called Christmas, the rest of the story. It's 15 parts and it comes in multiple formats. The subtitle says amazing insights about Christmas you've never heard before. My friends, this is the greatest story ever told. The only thing greater is the story of the cross. But today we're talking about Christmas. But this series comes with a wonderful study guide. And we're also offering you my book by the same title. It's a hardback called Christmas, The Rest of the Story. It's nearly 300 pages that are fully illustrated, full color. We have designed it to thrill your heart. And you'll want to order several because I guarantee you this is a book you're going to want to share with somebody else. But bow your head, put your hand on your heart. Father, we thank you that we found Jesus, that God, you revealed him to us. We thank you, Father, for the great euphoric moment it was when Christ came into our heart. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to share Christ with others so they can know him as well. In Jesus' powerful name, amen. Thank you for being with me today. I can hardly wait to get back tomorrow. It's going to be so rich. But until then, I want you to remember Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4, which says, where the word of a king is, there's power, which means if you'll embrace the word of God and believe it, it will release its power in your life. So do that today. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.